Hi, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. I'm starting off today not with news, but with an editorial. I always let you know when I'm about to editorialize because I want to make sure that you understand that I'm now allowing my biases to come into play. My bias in this regard is that I am a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment. And with that, buckle up. I'm a huge proponent of states' rights, as was intended with our republic. I recognize that every state is a little bit different and that state should have the right to represent their individual regional views a little differently than the rest of the country if that's what they want to do. This is one of the many reasons why the Electoral College is important, but that's an issue for another time. Gun laws in Massachusetts, where I grew up, are vastly different than the gun laws where I live now in North Carolina. Whether I like or dislike the laws doesn't matter. What does matter is that they have to fit within the confines of the Constitution. And that brings us to Virginia. Governor Northam, the dude that wore blackface and or a Ku Klux Klan robe on multiple occasions, but didn't get canceled somehow because he's a Democrat in a purple state, is on a war path to take away the Second Amendment and now First Amendment rights of the fine people of Virginia. He's backed by the controller in chief, Mike Bloomberg. That's right, folks. The guy that doesn't believe that the people of New York should have the right to decide how large their sugary beverage is, is on to bigger and better things. Bloomberg's every town has outspent nearly everyone in Virginia, and to his credit, he successfully bought a Democratic victory in Virginia this past year. He was the largest outside spender by a wide margin in the state of Virginia. He spent $2.5 million on only three seats, which allowed Virginia to turn blue for the first time in a generation. The quid pro quo here is that these legislatures had to pass gun control legislation or they wouldn't have a support in the future. Well, that shit happens all the time, Nick. People buy politicians all the time. What's the big deal now? Well, the big deal now is that Governor Blackface, supported by Mike, I know what's best for the rabble Bloomberg, with his army of paid for legislatures, is now stomping on the Constitution whenever they need to in order to get what they want and are now imposing illegal laws to control the population further so that nothing can happen to them. Meanwhile, all that the internet and the media has done is made fun of the people that showed up to protest this clown instead of actually dealing with the issues. So you might be watching this and you might be a proponent of gun control, that's fine. But what do these laws actually do? Let's go through them. Well, to start off, Virginia now has red flag laws that can remove somebody's weapons based on a complaint without any real due process. The weapons are taken, and the burden is now on the accused to prove that they're safe. And if you happen to work for a firearm store, or you work at a range, or maybe even law enforcement, anything where you actually need to have a weapon, yeah, you can't do that until this is all resolved. Which is supposed to take about 14 days to get in front of a judge, that, that's what the law is. But the judge can kind of arbitrarily extend that without making a decision for up to six months. And let's face it, that's gonna be the safe play for most judges, and I don't even blame them. Somebody comes in front of you, and, and people are saying, hey, this person might be dangerous, and you don't really have a clear idea of whether or not they are, well, it's better for you to not have the person get let off, and then they're on the news, and you're the judge that was like, yeah, it's fine, give them their guns back. So judges are gonna err on the side of, well, let's just, push this down the road to six months and then make a call. So if Karen next door hates your guts or hates guns, or maybe you have pink flamingos on your front lawn and she hates you for that, she can arbitrarily file a complaint against you. And based on that alone, you could potentially lose your gun rights for six months without even having a judge make any decision, even if it impacts your job. And what if it's all BS? Does Karen have to pay a price? No, she doesn't. In fact, there's nothing currently in the law that says Karen can't file a complaint against you again in a year. They also passed a one handgun a month law. Apparently, if you buy more than one handgun a month, you're super, super dangerous. What exactly does this law prevent? Then they passed a law that you can't carry a weapon, even if you're a concealed carry holder, to public spaces or protests. So if there's a protest going on and you walk through and you happen to be carrying, you're now a felon. Seems reasonable. 
The last law that they passed is a mandatory background check. For all intents and purposes, it was already in place. This was just to close a loophole on private sales. I can take it or leave it. I don't really care. But there's a lot more coming. A law is expected to pass to ban assault weapons. Now, to some of you, that doesn't seem like a big deal because you feel that assault weapons should be banned. Assault weapons, to most of you, is something that looks like an AR or an AK. That's not what this law says. Any centerfire weapon that can have a pistol grip and can fire more than 10 rounds with a magazine or weighs more than 3.1 pounds is now an assault weapon. If this passes, which it most likely will, you basically can either have a shotgun or a revolver. Everything else is an assault weapon. They literally are canceling the Second Amendment for virtually everyone that owns weapons in the state of Virginia. Your Glock, illegal. Your Colt, illegal. Your musket that you have as an ornamental thing that you bought from the Revolutionary War and is an heirloom, that's illegal. Why? It's over three pounds. Those assault muskets are now dangerous as <laughs> Well, Nick, that's the process. If gun owners want to do something about it, then they can get engaged in the next election. Well, they're doing something about it now. 96% of all counties are now sanctuary cities for the Second Amendment. 96%. Additionally, voters started a petition to recall Governor Blackface. Well, he didn't like that. So he got together with his boys and girls in the Democratic legislature, and they put together a bit of legislation that says, hey, I know it used to be 10% needed of all registered voters to have a recall election, but we're gonna up those numbers to 25%. You now need a quarter of all registered voters in Virginia to have a recall election. Oh, wait, it's not just that you need 25%. But they shortened the window from indefinite to 60 days. So you have two months to get the signatures of one quarter of the state's registered voters in order to get a recall election. That sounds democratic as f And guess what? If they start getting close to the 25% number, there's no reason why they can't arbitrarily change it. Because it's clear these people don't have any morals when it comes to this shit. So to recap, the guy that wore blackface or a Ku Klux Klan outfit or both, we're not really sure, who is backed by the billionaire from New York that doesn't want you to drink high fructose corn syrup, wants to take that decision away from you, is currently taking away gun rights in Virginia, taking away due process, changing the laws so that when you want to complain about it or do something about it, you can't. And we're making fun of the people protesting this? And that's not all. He is trying to make it illegal, illegal, to criticize him and other government officials online if you're using aggressive verbiage. The bill reads, if any person with the intent to coerce, intimidate, or harass any person shall use a computer or computer network to communicate obscene, vulgar, profane, lewd, lascivious, or indecent language, or make any suggestion or proposal of an obscene nature, or threaten any illegal or immoral act, he or she shall be guilty of a class one misdemeanor. Hey, Governor Northrop, you're a fucking pussy, go f yourself. King Racist George wants to make sure that all you plebs out there know that you cannot insult the king. Kim John Governor doesn't like it when you say mean things about him while he literally steals your freedoms right in front of you. You're supposed to just roll over and be a good little subject. Otherwise, apparently you have a micro penis. What a f***ing clown. There are a lot of people that believe in gun control. I've had many respectful conversations with them and I will again. I understand that politics is a give and take and there are many laws that pass that I don't like and vice versa. And that's just the way it is. But there is a process. This governor is a garbage human being that is trading on people's fears of a handful of acts that have taken place in our country over the last few years to reduce your second, first, and fourth amendment rights. He is literally changing the law so that you cannot remove him from office and you cannot insult him or say bad things about it. Everyone likes to bag on President Trump and oftentimes with good reason, but he hasn't done anything like this governor. This is some Putin level shit. 
he is absolutely rigging the game so that he gets his way. There is nothing in this that resembles a democratic process. He is an absolute disgrace to the office and should be treated as the absolute wit that he is. So that brings us to the rally. The news originally claimed it was going to be a white power rally and there'd be tons of Confederate flags everywhere. That didn't happen. Actually, it was really diverse. There were people from all walks of life, all races, all religions, all there to protect their freedoms. It was literally the least violent protest that I've seen in 10 years. The women's march that occurred in DC a few days earlier while I was at the Vetties had violence. A couple of women like ripped up signs, pushed people around, hit a guy that had a Trump hat on, like they had violence. That didn't happen at the gun rights march. Tens of thousands of people with weapons and not a single incident. Hell, they even picked up their trash on the way out. Not even the environmentalists do that after their protests. Well, when the media didn't get what they wanted, which was violence, and make no mistake about it, it absolutely is in the best interests of CNN, Fox, ABC, everybody. If, you know, shots were fired, some people died, bad things happened, because then they could have talked about that ad nauseum for just months. But when that didn't happen, they switched gears to making fun of the protesters. This guy's fat. That guy looks stupid. This is just tactical cosplay. Why does he need that gun? Hey, if you really want that gun, you should go down the street and enlist. I'm sorry, I, I forgot where it says in the Constitution that only people that serve in the military are allowed to have weapons. Last I checked, we were all equal citizens. Have you guys seen other protests? I mean, Antifa rallies are not exactly rallies just full of beautiful people. At the Women's March, people are literally wearing hats that look like vaginas. Like, we don't make fun of that? But we're gonna make fun of a bunch of guys that are protesting an actual assault on the Second, First, and Fourth Amendments because they don't look like Tim Kennedy? If the citizens of Virginia aren't allowed to peacefully fight the tyrant from Virginia and his tyrant overlord from New York, then when exactly are they allowed to start fighting? When the Bill of Rights is half gone? Three quarters? I'm just not sure, so let me know what the rules are so that, you know, we don't insult anyone or offend anybody. Are only 20-something bodybuilders allowed to protest? Again, just let me know what the rules are because I'm getting confused. And lastly, I just love how everyone is slamming the counties and the sheriffs for having sanctuary cities for the Second Amendment. For years, we have heard about the brave, amazing people that, that have stood up sanctuary cities for marijuana, or illegal immigration, or literally anything that they want, and they're held up at high esteem. But now, because it's the Second Amendment, something that is actually outlined in the Constitution, and you don't agree with it, suddenly these people are garbage? Are you that hypocritical? Just ask yourself that question. We're either okay with sanctuary cities and counties, or we're not. What it's about shouldn't matter. One standard, you pick it. But if you're adamantly opposed to sanctuary cities for the Second Amendment in Virginia, I better never see you talking positively about sanctuary cities in California for illegal immigration. It's not my preference to editorialize and certainly not to cover things in this aggressive of a manner, but the governor from Virginia is as anti-American a figure as I have seen, and I'm not up for letting this kind of bullshit slide. There is a right way and a wrong way to do things. If you want to attack the Second Amendment the way that he is attacking the Second Amendment, then you do that through the constitutional process. And with that, I'm done, and I will return to actual news. Ian O'Reilly, his wife and three kids, were on a hike in New Hampshire when they were attacked by a coyote. The coyote attacked his son, grabbing the hood of his jacket and pulling him to the ground. Ian quickly snatched back his son from the coyote and kicked it right in the head. He then pounced on the crazed animal and then choked it to death with his bare hands. It was then reported that after he killed the coyote, a number of other coyotes that had surrounded Ian and his family turned off their cloaking devices. The leader of the coyotes stepped forward and handed Ian a flintlock pistol from the 1700s. They then disappeared back into the woods. The family has been treated for rabies, just in case. Hillary Clinton was asked in an interview whether she would support Bernie Sanders and campaign for him. Not only did she decline, but she went full Regina George and said, No, no one likes him. 
He's a career politician that gets nothing done. It's like A whole bunch of wicked smart people have moved the symbolic doomsday clock to 100 seconds from midnight. Midnight being the apocalypse. How's that for bad news? To be honest though, I'm ready. I've spent enough time on this planet to be sick of all of you. Impeachment proceedings continue and they've certainly caused a lot of argument over the last year. Interestingly, one area where Republicans and Democrats agree is that witnesses should be called. 72% of all Americans would like to see the Senate call new witnesses including 69% of all Republicans. I agree, regardless of how you feel about the House impeachment proceedings, it's now in the Senate, and they have sworn an oath to do the best job they possibly can to determine whether or not the president should be impeached. Many outlets have pointed out that the senators have done virtually anything but pay attention. Some senators played with fidget spinners and paper airplanes. Others read a book or even napped. Before Thursday's arguments even began, some Republicans came out and said they've heard nothing new in the Democratic prosecutor's arguments. Many have stated that they've already made up their mind. Well, super then. Terry Jones, the beloved star of the legendary comedy group Monty Python, passed away this week at 77 from a rare dementia disease that he's been battling for some time. He was a major creative force in the British six-man comedy troupe. His writing influenced generations, including us, and was a trailblazer for comics and writers alike. Even with a terminal disease, the passing of people of his caliber is always unexpected. Much like the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Thank you for making the world brighter, and fair wind, sir. It was discovered recently that for many years, countless pallets of food, drugs and blankets have sat in a warehouse in Puerto Rico completely unused. Puerto Ricans have suffered multiple disasters, including three hurricanes and an earthquake, and all of this stuff was sitting there for their use. Puerto Rico Governor Wanda Vasquez has fired multiple people thought to be responsible. Those officials fired back that the supplies were outdated and no one had given them orders to distribute them. Vasquez has ordered an investigation and has proclaimed that, that private citizens that broke into the warehouse desperately looking for relief would not be prosecuted. So at least they've got that going for them. But, you know, they're still hungry, unfed, unclothed, no shelter. One suspected warehouse worker was let off the hook after it was found that he was in fact not aware. Two cases of the deadly coronavirus have been identified in Washington State and Chicago, while an additional 11 have been watched for the virus and are in quarantine at the moment. This just goes to show you that Wuhan, China ain't nothing to fuck with. The outbreak has grown rapidly in China with authorities confirming multiple cases throughout cities. Symptoms of the coronavirus include respiratory problems, fever, and coughing. It can lead to severe cases of pneumonia, acute respiratory syndrome, and even death. Its origins come from a civet cat, which is a delicacy in China. Luckily, it was made illegal for sale and consumption in 2004. But none of that matters because there's videos of it being sold at the market where the outbreak originated. Way to go, China. In related news, while the coronavirus is bad, its cousin, the Dos Equis virus, is far worse. Turkey has once again shown why it's the crown jewel of NATO by introducing a law that says if a man rapes a woman under the age of 18, so I guess a girl, he doesn't get prosecuted if he marries her because it saves the honor of the family. In the last decade, 483,000 girls have been married off to grown men in Turkey. There's no joke here. The whole thing is just gross and sad. And frankly, I just feel lucky that I live in a country where this doesn't exist. In a shocking twist of irony, a man from India died when he took a razor-laden cock to the throat. Apparently, this cock was his. He had his cock out and planned on putting it in a cock ring, where illegal cock fighting was prominent in India. He planned on having his cock beat as many cocks as it could before someone else's cock beat his cock. He made his living on illegal cock fighting, and to him, this was just another cock in his life. But as fate would have it, this cock decided to make life hard on the man. The cock attacked the man, penetrating his throat, slicing it open with the razors attached to his legs, 
and killing it as he would any other cock that was before him. Animal cruelty is appalling and rampant, but suffice to say that cock beat that dick at his own game. Wah! That's a lot of cock! And finally in Florida man news, an arctic breeze that has cut through Florida has frozen iguanas dropping from the sky. Several Florida citizens, or badass entrepreneurs as I like to call them, have taken to catching these frozen lizards, skinning them, and selling them online as the chicken of the trees. The skinned and butchered lizards have appeared everywhere for as little as a dollar a pound. Can you eat them? Absolutely. It looks like for now, this economical source of protein is gonna keep Florida man moving and cruising as he plans his next caper. Florida man, I salute you. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already, and I just want to remind you that Governor Northam is a total piece of shit. And you can shop at rangerup.com to keep this news show going. Thanks again.